Oh, God fucking damn it. What now? Brunch. Hit it, boys. Notable episode. We're going to talk about some stuff that's uh, happening with the show. But before we do that, we're going to uh, be uh, dickheads and talk about uh, things that we like. So uh, I don't know when during the episode that's going to come. So you, there, there can't even be uh, like, oh, okay, we'll just drag and scroll to whenever. Because there's a great chance we're just going to forget to talk about that anyway. There is, I mean, there is a really good chance that we forget to talk about it. But the beauty of the internet and post-production is that we can put in timestamps that let people know. But I don't want people to drag to do it. Yeah, like, I, I think that maybe we throw, like... You better we, like we, and subscribe we, first. We treat it like Minesweeper, where, like, we'll throw in some false timestamps. Ah. And you have to go figure it out and hope that you don't hit the wrong one. Speaking of false stuff, I think we've got a big straw man on our hands right now. Well, yeah, famously, it's Halloween, and so... Ah, it's a spooky season. Scarecrows are out there. I have been told, by the way, when I post a picture, the same picture I've been posting for months of a grocery store in Maine, I've been told that uh, Halloween candy's actually been out for a while now. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, some per- one person said even uh, it's been out since September. Yeah, I mean, wow. C- pretty crazy. I can't believe that they would put it out in October. Uh, the big straw man, if you're looking for a Halloween costume and you want to be a straw man, you can be the person that is mad that uh, women are watching football because of Taylor Swift stuff. I'm on Twitter, and I have the For You thing, Mm -hmm. which is the For You thing is the section where you see all the shit that you don't want to see and don't align with your beliefs and everything. (laughs) And And just murders. Yeah. Oh, you know what I'm hating? The foul tip thing. Have you seen that? No. It's a... it, it's like a jump scare people are putting into videos. They'll be like, uh, my favorite thing, and then it'll cut to a foul tip that hits oh. the camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a pretty yeah. bad jump scare. But no, like I'm getting a lot of people saying like, hey, to all the guys out there that are so mad, or not even guys, like to, to all the people there that are so mad that they're showing Taylor Swift during the games and the people are watching the games because of uh, Taylor Swift. It's a good thing. You're getting more fans. It means more money. It means more this. It means more that. And not quite to the extent of to all the people saying Phoebe Bridgers shouldn't be allowed to smash her guitar. I'm like, who is saying that? Are you seeing anybody saying like, why are they showing Taylor Swift? Like Taylor Swift's there because uh, they're doing. I mean, I'm definitely seeing like the why do they keep showing her? And like to that, to a certain extent, I'm like, yeah, they'll just show her several times. We know that it's going to happen, but like you don't, you don't need to cut to her every fucking series. And more, more than that, the thing that bothers me more than that is please stop with the fucking puns. Oh, like if I have to hear goddamn Mike title, Tirico yeah. or Chris Hansen drop a single more fucking Taylor Swift, because they're all the same and they're all terrible. It's so, all low hanging fruit. So what's Pete, what Pete is doing is not the thing that this discourse is combating. Pete is saying the media coverage of it is nauseating. Yes. That's fine. And that's true. And I mean, I've always hated the, I mean, I, my, my, my friend Tevin did it relatively early in the game. He did the million uh, that song was creative. titles. And it was like, it was topical for that moment because Midnight's right. was coming out and people wouldn't know all the song titles yet. So it was like a cool little thing. And there were some deep cuts in there. in there. Like, don't fucking. He's talking about Midnight Rain. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like Tevin has fucking earned his stripes there. The stuff of like, uh, there was a blank space in the yeah. end zone and Travis Kelsey ran to it, like, respectfully. Suck my dick with all that stuff. Like, get out of here. And Chris Hansen, in particular, is just recycling material like crazy. Uh, Oh, I... He he has hit, like, the same four song titles, like, three weeks in a row. And he's also recycling... I, I tweeted about this the other day. He loves to let everybody know every single week. Anytime a player with the number zero catches a pass or something, he's like, oh, and number zero is legalized for skill players this year. He says it every fucking week. Well, it's legal, man. It's fucking annoying. Got to get the word out there. Uh, But so like 80% of the discourse (laughs) I'm seeing on this is there's nothing wrong with new people checking out a football game. 
And I truly, please like show me if there's anybody of any repute doing this, please show me and I will say, hey, okay, I didn't know that you were talking about this one specific instance of it or whatever. I really am not seeing any of the discourse. I watch Get Up every fucking day. I listen to a lot of sports radio. God knows here in Boston, Felger's not complaining about it because Felger's a fucking Swifty himself. Zolak's a huge Swifty. Like, I'm only hearing uh, conjecture, speculation as to like, what do you think the relationship is? And kind of feeding into all the beast, which whatever, do that. That's fine. I've, I've I'm seeing most... a lot of people taking statements against something that I don't think is happening. No, I don't think that's happening. Like I said, I think that most of the complaints are either about the media and the coverage of it. Or number two, people just being like, who the fuck cares? Mm -hmm. And if you're in the camp of like, who the fuck cares? Like, you have to understand that a lot of people care because it's Taylor Swift and she's like arguably the most famous and relevant celebrity yeah. in the world right now. So like, the answer is a lot of people care. A lot of people care no matter what it is Taylor Swift does. And like, just you have to accept that and you have to get the fuck over it. But if you're like, hey, I don't fucking care. Please stop showing her. I'm here to watch a football game. I'm f I'm okay with that. I don't think that's a ridiculous take. But like the the thing that you're saying with which I I'm gathering is like football fans being like, how like dare Taylor Swift together like and... football? Yeah, I haven't seen any of that. I shit. don't want any of the Swifties here. Like, look, real talk. Nobody wants any of the Swifties anywhere. <laughs> yeah, I know. but like. It's like I was saying when you remember when uh, it's like a horse when a you need to, to when you need to calm down came out and a lot of people were like, hey, Taylor, late. Like, where's all this support for the LGBTQ uh, community been for whatever? And it's like fair, perhaps. However, like also let's as a society cash that check. Yeah. Like, let's use this. If if somebody with that big a voice is speaking on something important, then hopefully that can lead to the average person who doesn't think about that stuff say, oh, Taylor Swift said it, so now I'm going to pay attention to these things. Uh, obviously, kind of apples and oranges as far as importance goes, but, like, if the NFL is getting a bajillion more fans, yeah, f forget specifically why they're there. It's a good thing. Yeah, for and sure. And that's cool. And Yeah, and, like, I mean... I also think a big positive that's come out of this whole thing and this whole ordeal is that the NFL cheats for the Chiefs now. Yeah. It's no. rigged now. No, I think that like I think that deranged Swifties or Delulu Swifties mm. are like they're they're kind of being like separated. Like the real Delulu ones are getting separated from the regular Delulu ones, and the regular Delulu ones are like, we don't claim them, which is hilarious. Oh. <laughs> because I think that like this whole thing has amplified the the extra delulu god damn it what it gives me an idea that i'm like do we take the few minutes to do it if we did a reel of uh swifty fans once the swifties once they're converted to nfl fandom and it's like us talking about sports and but like swifties do and like everything's an easter egg and everything was like sam laporta knew and like fucking uh josh mcdaniels left his fucking headset over there it means this that like it would do well i don't know if i have the energy to do it maybe i'll just like <laughs> say the universe if you want to do it like the maddie healy thing we legitimately just hit pause and just like scribbled stuff down and we're able to spit that out quickly the football thing, you'd have to think, okay, now how do we make it appealing for football fans? How do we make it so Swifties who have now learned, let's say, 20% of what's going on, the N on in the NFL would get a reference to Brandon Staley being uh, unhinged or whatever? That would take a little more work, so I'm not going to do that. Okay. But it's an idea. <laughs> it is an idea. Uh, you, uh, the Brandon Staley is kind of Lulu, though. I mean, yeah. Oh, He's so keeping his job so in spite the of I would say the Chargers are more Delulu because they're still employing Brandon Staley. I mentioned Mike Felger before. He's like the most uh, popular radio host in Boston. His partner is Tony Maserati, who's a great guy. And as sports radio hosts go, they're going to say some things that about your team or whatever that you get pissed off about. You say, oh, that's a hot take. I never really get that reaction, except... Uh, a couple weeks ago, I did hear they were talking about quarterbacks, and Justin Herbert came up, and Maz said, "Oh, you know that I don't like Herbert. That guy's a losing player." And I was like, 
first Chargers. Yeah, pal, I know. <laughs> Just that like, is so. It is so not Justin Herbert's fault. Yeah, that's like being like just fucking a, a plane lands like in a mcdavid's a, plane, a loser a plane lands in a dump and you're like oh that guy's dirty gross yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it, mcdavid's it's a, like it's a not loser. his fucking fault he was just in a plane crash that landed in a dump it's like calling uh no it's not because this would be correct it'd be like calling glenn close a losing actor <laughs> that is yeah that's she is legitimately a fact she she oh my god the <laughs> stat padding that she does what a plastic career she's had uh, just yeah, like put up a l- bunch of stats and when it's a lot of empty net goals exactly <laughs> when it's time to uh, i almost posted something uh the bedard uh scored connor bedard scored an empty net goal yeah. last night it was his first goal i'm sure everybody made this joke actually but i was going to be like this you can't defend this guy yeah, well, there's like yeah. nothing you can do yeah. against this guy. I mean, guy. I, I opened up Twitter this morning. I think that was the first thing I saw. It was like the Heat Daddy being like, uh, "This kid is legit. Can't deny it anymore." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just wanted to throw bait out there so we'd be like, "Uh, you could put a goalie there." I'm like, what's he gonna do? <laughs> Embrace debate. Would a goalie have stopped this? I don't think so. Connor Bedard is uh, sick. Uh, there's news for uh, your boy Matty Healy. Yeah, well, of course. He. Uh, I bet I can guess what it is. So, all right. Maddie Healy apologized for some no of the way. Sir, for some of the the shit that he said and obviously he's he aims to be a jester and some things we've talked about this off the podcast some of the stuff that he says to push the envelope I think is to push the envelope and some of the stuff he says I'm like I legitimately don't find that funny because you've now said the R word 33 days in a row and like it loses some of its like the the like shock value kind of wears off yeah, when it's for like sure. oh let me guess you're going to make this joke all right uh, so all that being said so that that is for me to say like i am for sure not married to this man's he goes humor back to the well and, quite often and i'd like him to mix it up and uh with some not just appalling stuff anyway um to each their own uh he apologized during his show in a thing that was dr- caked in irony it turned into a better help read did you watch the video no i did not oh so this is so important i this. only i only saw the the text so this is i mean really what i want to talk about he said uh hey you know sometimes when you're trying to be funny you do the wrong thing blah blah so uh I'd like to apologize because, and he, it, it did have some like, if I offended people, I'm sorry, but there can be sincerity in like, hey, I said something stupid and I really wasn't trying to offend people, but obviously it did offend people. So I need to, re- to reassess how I go about my stuff. And that's what he said. And as he was saying that people started to cheer and he said, y- yeah, give it up for, uh, give it up for the old apology. And then he continued his thing, and then it devolved into, like, a jokey thing, and then it ended up being a better help read. Uh, but the... Not that there's anything wrong with better help reads. We'd had, we've had to do a few of those ourselves. So, personally, I took it again, and I'm not, like, vouching for Maddie Healy. I took it as he was addressing that, like, hey, I get that I'm an asshole sometimes, and I'm not, like, actually trying to be an asshole. So, well, I'm going to... I guess he would say that sincerity is scary. Correct. Uh, it's a, it's a Taylor Swift uh, <laughs> song. Uh, he was saying what are you saying, which is I'm an asshole sometimes, and I don't always mean to be an asshole. So I'm gonna reassess how I go about making these jokes. Uh, but there's a Jezebel thing that says Maddie Healy pledges to do better and asks crowd to applaud his apology, which technically correct. But this thing goes on to rip him apart and say like it wasn't a real apology and blah blah. Uh, the writer of that article is a real dick. That's all I'll say. I, I'm, I'm not, not ma- on board with. I, I'm and we. This has come up at a few things over the years. I'm not on board with lying and misrepresenting something to make your point. Mm-hmm. Like like this person if wants to say I po- hate Maddie Healy. If you want to make the point that Maddie Healy is an asshole or that you hate Maddie Healy, you can do it without twisting anything. Treasure because, trove because of evidence. That man makes it so easy for you to call him an asshole and hate him. And far be it for me to be a Matt Healy apologist. I'm a 1975 super fan, and I like Matt Healy. I don't think that he is as much of an 
of an asshole as he would like you to believe a lot of the time. I think that he uh, he plays a character, and a lot of the time he is pretty pretty offensive. Yep, by by design or not, but like he, I'm not going to apologize for like f- I'm not going to be an apologist for him because he's got to answer that shit himself. And and as somebody who likes to, I mean, you don't have the platform that Maddie Healy does. Uh, like if you if that were your kind of humor and like your thing of like this is like what i find funny as someone who's in the business of getting clicks and attention off of stuff if you liked that shit you'd be say like you'd be doing stuff like that and if you did people would see it as the most out of character thing in the world yeah and i mean so but like more to the point is that like i want i want my maddie healy to be like a character because i i think that that's like his personality is in the lyrics of a lot of the songs. A lot of the, the lyrics are like, I wouldn't say offensive, but but like dark or like a little evocative. Sure, yeah. And so like provocative. I, I like when they align with the character, but I also think that like to your point earlier, you the character has to have a little bit more creativity than a lot of the things that Maddie Healy says sometimes. And like if you're gonna say offensive shit. Make it be funny because a lot of the right. things that he's that, been saying recently have just not been that funny and have just been like, oh, God damn it. Please stop putting yourself in these headlines so that I'd like, the I like. I don't want to feel bad thing, about being a 1975 fan. The, the boy genius thing, which we're not going to repeat, but like that wasn't even fucking close to funny. Yeah, I mean, like it was. I, I don't think that he was like thinking that he was. And again, like you've now a said this word, pe- punchline or whatever. Yeah. But it was just like one of those things where I was like, "Come on!" It's that you know, like when your funny friend, and this might hit a little close to home, but you know when like your funny friend has said some funny things, and you consider this person funny, and it, just at some point, whether you've been around them too long, again hitting close to home, where you're just like, "I don't even care if that's funny." Shut the fuck up. Yeah, pretty just much. Like, yeah. Like, like, that like, was my you, exact reaction. You don't need to, it. to like. You don't need to take all these <laughs> swings. Like you've proven to me you're fucking f- funny. The funnier, the funnier tweet was the immediate follow up tweet where he just goes, "This never goes well. Why am I back here?" <laughs> it it gives me it makes me appreciate Josh Tillman more. Right. I'm sure yeah, that we've like, at, yes. at points been like, especially early in the podcast, like, you see, Tillman said this, and I was like, nothing, anything offensive, but like, you see, Tillman did this. Oh, God, what an asshole. But like, has anybody really, other than Ryan Adams, has anybody ever really been like, Josh Tillman's a fucking asshole? No, he doesn't I don't think present, so. like, he, he's presented as a jester at points, right. but he's never. Well, so here's the difference. Is like, this guy's like a dick. Here's the difference. Like when you saw Father John Misty trending on Twitter and like you just saw it on the sidebar, you'd be like, oh, this hell yes. <laughs> like this is going to be awesome. When you see Maddie Healy trending on Twitter, you're like, oh, God fucking damn it. What now? Like that's the difference. Great way of putting it. Great way of putting it. It's like I should make the like like Chris Rock and Dave Chappelle where like they're both they'll both like say some shit. But one of them and. I don't want to get into that whole can of worms, but like they they'll both say some shit, but one of them is like, I have to wonder, are you just saying shit to piss people off right. now? Like, and have you kind of lost your way from this real, like real, real, real talent that you have? People go back and forth on the 1975 and uh, they're, they're, uh, their sonic aesthetic, of course, <laughs> is something they repeat a lot. I think that they're really, really, really talented. Yeah. Uh, I, so M- Father John Misty is an adult with depression. Matty Healy is a teenage boy with the internet ADD. access. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> like, that's, that's the difference there. All right. So uh, from one... Uh, Actually, this is good. Are we going to discuss three musical acts with uh, troublesome conjecture around them and their fans in a row? Because there's no. We've got one or two. Two. That was two. We did Taylor. We did Maddie yeah, Healy. Fucking... You want to bring it home yeah, with the biggest one? Yeah. 
Uh, I wouldn't say that this was the biggest one. But. Have neither of us ever seen Phoebe Bridgers or Boy Genius Live? Um, no. Never. No. And I... Almost. Mm, it, really? I almost saw uh, Phoebe Bridgers and Maggie Rogers in Portland. Ah. Uh, what a... What a chuckle of laughs that would have been. <laughs> <laughs> what, a, what a barrel. I mean, knowing what I know now, I'm glad I didn't because it uh, seems like I may not have been welcome. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I loved the Boy Genius EP. We've been doing a bit of text messaging, just grinding, not only making content together, we text each other. Uh, we're both pretty on record, and if we're not on record of this, of fucking loving Julian Baker. Maybe even we're more than we record. love Julian we're Baker's not. music. I, I don't think I've ever uttered the words Julian Baker oh, I've on, been, on a microphone. I, somewhere there is a... Uh, I don't know if I started or what, but it was on... Uh, there used to be a website called Twitter. And it was like, the boy... The, like, all the boys versus each other, who wins? Mm -hmm. And a friend of the podcast, Neurotic City, was like, it's going to sound like a hot take, Julian Baker. And obviously, like, who wins is, like, it doesn't mean anything. It's just, like, who's your favorite, who's the best, whatever, just, like, uh, all around. And my friend Neurotic City was, like, it's got to be Julian Baker. And I was, like, that's because it fucking is Julian Baker. I just, I, I have such, a, like, a sweet spot in my heart for Julian Baker. I don't love all of her music, but I love her as a performer. I love, I think that Boy Genius is so strong for... If one of the heads of your three-headed monster is Julian Baker, your band fucking rocks. And, like, I don't know if this is insulting, but, like, I think, like, in from – correct me if I'm wrong. I think that Julian Baker would probably rank three out of three. In on, popularity? In popularity amongst the three. Maybe. I mean, Lucy's really been uh, stirring it up on Twitter, so I think her stonk has been – Going up, yes, <laughs> for, yeah, for, that's what I mean. She's been and like yeah. Phoebe Bridges. She's been getting this. in fights online, so obviously she's going to be the most famous. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, I think that w maybe that was the wrong way to put it. I think that Julian Baker is the quietest. Yeah, commands the least amount of attention, but just fucking like fucking rocks. Would hot be, as hell. I was going to say, like, it would be remiss if I didn't say that she has a great face. Yeah, she's. I mean, all the, the, if, if we need to be guys and this will lead well into this like <laughs> we need to be guys all all of the boys are hot. fucking uh beautiful and uh, julian baker just has a fucking way of, about her even in like their nardwar interview or whatever it's like i want to be your best friend and you'd be such a fucking good friend and you have to hold all this together while these other two are fucking picking fights with dead david crosby online i mean uh, Phoebe Bridgers takes on David Crosby, and Lucy Dacus takes on Maddie Healy. And Barack Obama. And Barack Obama. Like, yo, Lucy, I don't agree with all of it, but, like, <laughs> you're right. And, and actually, I'll say Lucy uh, takes on some uh, low-hanging arguments, but... Yeah, but, I mean, there is... I, w I did, like, roll my eyes at the Obama thing, but the idea of, like, Obama being, like, love your music and you're being like fuck you you killed people <laughs> like I mean, it takes some balls to do that <laughs> if i had to bet who would be on his playlist that actually be a fun like series i don't know if we've ever talked of, about like, this projecting like, like who's going to be on it basically like who went from an indie label to a mate who who was so, already super well known and was on an indie label and then went list, on to do you think that list is curated by like soundtrack people or whatever like it is far too wide spanning and like on the pulse of who's gotten very popular recently if do they combined that curated current, if they combined current will defreeze with 2013 dj bean like that guy is in obama's ear of like it the, does like, feel too like the the curation ability, which yes. I don't really have, and the like. Here's what has some buzz right yeah, now, which like, I, I once had. Yeah, that's that's what makes me kind of roll my eyes every time that Obama like here's what I'm listening to, or like here's what I'm watching or reading. He always puts out those lists, mm. and it's always so fucking manicured and curated. 
perfectly where people are like, oh, shit, that's cool as fuck. Two minute detour. We'll get back to put the boys a, put, put in a something second. that's so fucking not cool that throws us off the scent. He needs to do that. What if Obama put like Cowboy by Kid Rock in your yeah, life? I would respect Whoa, it so much Whoa, he put much a fucking more. Kid Rock song, but it was from before we before Kid Rock kind of was like, being that dude. Like throw on like like the most offensive like Cowboy songs. Cowboy by Kid Rock, like that Kid Rock double without a cause is probably voting for Obama. Yeah, probably. So like that would that would just lead to some gnarly podcast episodes. <laughs> I just like I just need something thrown into the mix where it's like what the f- damn he thought it would be okay to put this on here. You know, like uh, I don't think it's the wrong way, everybody, but like hashtag Obama put Kanye on your playlist. <laughs> yeah, right. They're like ah, because you know, like every I, I find myself in this situation today, like where someone will be like, yo, let's toss on some Kanye, and you're like. Oh right, it's still available. Make him defend something. Make him defend something on his li- on his list. That's all I'm asking for. Whether Famously, it- Obama has never had to defend anything. He's a president, so he had to defend some of his policies and debates. Uh, the the quick <laughs> two minute detour is uh, you know what's on my playlist right now is uh, 3D by Jungkook mm-hmm. featuring uh, Jack Harlow. I did not know that Jungkook from uh, BTS had been putting out solo songs. Did not know that either. But it big time sounds like a solo song from a boy band member. It's like Justified Timberlake meets uh, that JC Chazé song Blowing Me Up meets any of... Were you around for like Jordan Knight's solo stuff? Uh, no. Jordan Knight was uh, in a boy band called New Kids, Kids on, the, on the, Block. the Block. I didn't know that. Yeah. And he had some, he had a couple of fucking bangers, including the song Give It To You, which was re- written by Robin Thicke. Makes me realize now, Robin Thicke's always kind of had a thing for, uh, like, a- aggressive might be too aggressive a word, but, like, his songs were very, like, rapey? girl, we do in this. No, well, like, Blurred Lines is, like, rapey. Yes. Give It To You, I don't want to say is that, but... Give it to uh, it's just give like, it to you is like girl you know I can give it to you, and like we've we're adults we've been in relationships before I don't think I've ever said to somebody I'm courting, girl you know I can give it to you, yeah and like I mean, the scene in uh, it's a low bar, yeah it's you know I think that most people can can give it, it's yeah just a, true. That's just like that's a very low bar to clear. But if you can't, d- and you got low T, the, describe the quality. Sign up for whatever. Oh, we never talk. There's a snake oil show. We're not going to talk snake about snake oil show. Someone started a snake. It's a snake oil show where people go on and you have to figure out if they're selling snake oil. Oh, okay. Uh, anyway, so it's like Shark Tank, but like MythBusters. Yeah, something okay. like that. Uh, so the boy genius thing. I didn't realize this. Uh, I read it in uh, Pitchfork. And I almost last week I was at a Boston Red Sox game, living that sweet life. Yuck. No, it was well, cool. Yeah, okay, I stayed the whole life. game, got ice cream. Mm-hmm. That's uh, not impressive. Baseball games are only like two hours now. That's right. Um, but as I was walking to, I went to Newberry Street before, did a little shopping, and as I was walking to Fenway, I saw this big crowd walking there, and I was like, for a Red Sox game in this economy, what are we doing? And then I saw a huge ass line. And I was like, whoa. And then I realized it was for the MGM Music Hall, which people say has gotten a lot better. We'll be the judges when we go back. It was really bad when we went back in the day. Um, Did you go to the 1975 show? Yes, and they were horror shows. Yeah, the one where the fucking pipe burst? Yeah, pipe burst, no first floor bathroom. I was told there is now a first floor bathroom. I'll believe that when I see it. Yeah, Uh, But I was like, oh, that's right. Boy Genius is playing two nights here. They played the night before. And uh, a friend had said something to the effect of at the first night, uh, they did. They were like, uh, like, all right, like if, if you're queer, make some noise or whatever. And the whole place made noise. And it was like this big, like gay uh, queer party. And they were like, and how about if you're an ally? And then like the person joked that like the 10 remaining people there were like, woo. Yeah. And it was like, okay, cool. Interesting. Uh, I then read a few days later that there is gatekeeping going on among the boy genius fan base where I'm assuming 
very young people are saying like this isn't for you if like so someone posted a thing on reddit they said they went uh they yeah, were bisexual were, like, multiple stories yeah oh yeah, yeah like reddit. tons yeah the, but the the one that a, a person went to uh the concert that they were bisexual this is a woman went with their bisexual boyfriend and they were like given cold looks and treated a certain way and then posted about it on reddit being like hey i had a great time at the concert is it me or just blah blah blah. and then got like hammered with people being like yeah you shouldn't have been there this isn't for you and like just because you say you're bisexual doesn't make you queer you were at uh so many things wrong like with this. you're in a straight presenting relationship and blah blah and as so i say this things pete this. and i are both straight but like i can promise you that's not what boy genius is going for like 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 exclusionary yeah, shit what? like that like, and if you I, are you like, can say some shit about like Phoebe Bridgers and like toxic fan base or whatever i can guarantee that like they want everybody to be together <laughs> yeah and like it just goes against the entire fucking purpose of of like inclusion yeah. Like you should want to be included, but you should also include. Like that's I just I there's just like the gatekeeping thing drives me crazy and yeah. like the I, I don't know. Like this whole fucking this whole story gives me like the heebie-jeebies. I assume I assume it's young white people. Uh, I would if I had to guess, yeah, probably. Uh but saying i bet it's just some kids or whatever like i i just want to make sure and our listeners are old and grown probably but like people are writing these things on reddit with confidence saying like this is our place it's not for other people or whatever and for sure there are things where like it, you could say like okay well relatively i'm an outsider to this or like i'm appreciating this thing like i uh, I just I like I have the biggest problem with like being like especially with a music thing and like Boy Genius is accessible. Yeah. Boy Genius is an accessible band. Yeah. They're very big in in like the queer scene obviously, but like it's pretty it's it's pretty people and cool people yeah, making good, good music. music, right? And uh, like uh, that's I just, getting eaten up. And I I'll, I'll guarantee you this. 99% of straight people who are showing up to a Boy Genius show are not going there to fuck up a, a gay person's time or a queer person's time. I hope so, yeah. <laughs> like I would assume that like they're very they're very cooler and an ally because like that is a big part of boy genius. Yeah, th that's a good point. Like like I'm not going to I do Ray understand if they were like, being like fuck gay people. Like right. I understand the crowd and like I I want to be in that crowd. Yeah. And like I'm it's all part of like that culture. Yeah, I, so when I say, like, everybody should be accepted or whatever, it would be a little weird if, like, a Trumper is at, like, like wearing MAGA yeah, shirts or something. but that's, and like, the, but that's, like, in, that's, that's like, not happening. That's making a statement, Yeah, m more or less. We were and at a Fiddler show uh, shortly after the 2016 election. It was, like, days after, and somebody, I think they were kind of doing the Matty Healy thing and just trying to be, like, provocative, was like... Trump is our president, President Trump. And everyone was like, we don't know what you're trying to do, but just do, like, get like, out of here, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, fucking stop. And like, I mean, we, we've both gone to a pri like pride parades and we've both gone to pride parades as the son, as the father of a daughter. <laughs> right. Oh. We've gone to pride parades and nobody had a problem with us being there or at least like vocalized having a problem with yeah, us and being I'm there. Yeah. I'm sure if we were like, being like, oh hi, like like trying to like play stuff up, they'd be like, yo, yeah, cut right, it out. like, like yeah, you're don't... helping or hurting, right? Somebody did. I do remember though at a pride parade, uh, I uh, hit it off with uh, a dude there who we were talking for a few minutes, and then he was like, oh, by the way, like thanks for coming and like supporting the cause or whatever. He hadn't said he was gay. I hadn't said that I was straight, and I was like, oh, how did you uh, know I was straight? And he was like. You're wearing shit with flags on it. We're not. We don't fucking do. Like I'm just fucking wearing my clothes. <laughs> like relax. And that that I at least hope. Like I don't know. Uh, I at least hope that 
afterwards, he wasn't like, oh, these fucking straight people gumming up everything and trying My to make it. culture is not your costume. Yeah, and <laughs> but I, th- this was a friendly enough person where it clearly was like, oh, yeah, if you want me to scale any of this shit back to, <laughs> yeah. like, I just got this on Amazon, like, three days ago. <laughs> I can... Uh, I, I can lose it. But yeah, wish I wasn't the, wearing this fucking shirt. <laughs> yeah, but um just the 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 toxic fan base thing can be one thing where it's like maybe you're maybe it's just a bunch of young people who are too excited about stuff or loud and annoying, but like don't be fucking like harmful because that's going to in and like if you're very proud of like your commu- the community whether it's like the the pride community whether it's the boy genius community you don't fucking own that fandom like yeah like and and i do get i do get maybe this is a little problematic where like if you're like i feel that this thing speaks to me and it speaks to people who are like me god i wish that the building could just be people who interpret it and access it the exact same way as me i wish there weren't a fucking tall dude here or something like yeah same that's like i for sure get that but like don't say tall dude this isn't for you get out yeah, of here right <laughs> yeah so like that's the only thing and don't be just don't be a fucking asshole i like, love love don't gatekeep don't be an asshole it's really that simple uh if you like simple things then maybe you should try subscribing to hello fresh Ooh. because hello fresh uh we're back on the hello fresh train and I I'm not even looking at the read right now. Oh. We're back on the Hello Fresh train, and oh! we alluded earlier in the podcast that sometimes we text each other. There's been a lot of Hello Fresh texts between us mm-hmm. over the past week. We've been diving into those uh, those bags that they sent us, and, and cooking the same things at the same time, at the exact I've same time without communication, and it's been so super weird, crazy. I I so I enjoy that more than you do when those things it, overlap. It, it really freaks me out sometimes. Like whenever we go out to eat, like we always order the fucking same thing. Good. We always like are doing the same. It's just it freaks me out. Yeah. Uh, but HelloFresh gives you farm fresh pre portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. You don't have to go to the grocery store, uh, and you can just count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Uh, I will say. It's definitely fresh. It's definitely easy. I don't know how fun it is, but it's affordable. Fun. Is it fun? Like, I don't find cooking fun most of the time. It Easy is the biggest thing for me. You know what? Two things have been uh, really getting me off <laughs> lately. Go on. Cooking. Okay. And I don't like this word is used as a catch-all because hopefully you know me well enough that I'm a clean person. I can be disorganized at points. Cooking and cleaning have just been hitting the freaking spot for me. So when, and also I've been, I feel good when I cook, but I don't like doing it. Mm. Also, I've been cooking, like meaning like, like let Deej cook. Mm -hmm. I've been cooking like all day and working on stuff. So being able to have, whether it's 25 minutes to do the prep or whatever, having a a time to kind of turn everything off and just make dinner, toss on some music or a podcast, it's lovely. And I wouldn't have been doing that if I didn't get that HelloFresh package. That's right, Uh, because HelloFresh does all the shopping and meal planning for you. The ingredients arrive at your doorstep pre-portioned, and they're ready to cook, along with pictured step-by-step recipe cards, which are pretty huge. The recipe cards are very, very helpful. It basically shows you exactly what you need to do. I thought you meant like size-wise, because they're they huge. Are, they they're are huge. also huge size-wise. They are pretty huge. Like, you're thinking index cards? No. They are. This is like poster board stuff. Yeah. Uh, and they also uh, they make whipping up home-cooked dinners very, very doable with c- quick and easy options. Most of their stuff are, like can be done in 15 to 25 minutes, and that's less time than it takes to get delivery. So uh, you can feel good about what you're eating. You can feel very productive in the fact that you cooked it yourself. Um, so, like, we love it. We've been talking about it. I did a, a – they sent, like, a bolognese. Yeah, I haven't done that. I, I tossed that in the freezer. You the bolognese? It's in the freezer. The so bolognese, um, it, I think it was – Pork. It was like, oh, I thought it was like a sausage bolognese. It is. Yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, it's a sausage bolognese, and it's really, really, really good. So if you want to uh, get in on some of that action, go to HelloFresh.com/slash fifty brunch. That's code fifty brunch for fifty percent off plus free 
shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash 50 brunch for 50% off plus free shipping. Uh, it's America's number one meal kit for a reason. So go check it out again. HelloFresh.com slash 50 brunch. Yeah, dude. What I've been doing is I'll get in my HelloFresh bag and I'm glad that you note in there, probably with a financial gun to your head that HelloFresh does the shopping for you. It is nice that the process starts with just like, I open the bag and now we're off. Yeah. Because like it does, if you're making something and you're meal prepping, and I've had stretches usually when I'm on some sort of diet where I'm like going to the grocery store a lot. And if you are doing real life work, it takes forever and it's very easy to just say fuck it and give up on it. I like that like I open the bag, I fire up a podcast really is what I've been doing. It's been, uh, and then I cook. I've been listening to Pablo Torre finds out, and uh, also the El Duncan Torre, show. isn't it? Torre, yeah. I, I I did a little more e there. Uh, a, a big thing I've been on like the last couple of years. If I notice somebody, either that I'm friends with or have some sort of access to, is doing a good job, maybe in something that is young, early, or burgeoning. Like I text Feidelberg. Every fucking five minutes about uh, about out of order, mm-hmm. being like that one was fucking good, like good fucking. Jo- you're so fucking funny, man. It's a good thing. That's to great. Do. Like love it. You're being uh, an early adopter and a supporter. I've been just dumping text messages and DMs at people, being like, "Hey, your new show is fucking great. And good job." You know what you should do is when the shows blow up, yeah, you never talk to them about it again. Yeah, no, or just be like, like act like they sold out. Yeah, be like I like the early shit. Yeah, right. I like the stuff like that kind of happened to us, to us with this podcast. Mm. It's like there were people at the very beginning, yeah, who were like all about it. Yeah, and like haven't heard from them in years. What are they up to? Why did they? Why did they jump shit? I think it's because we we were mean to could, them. No, we got interests. Yeah, fair. And like I will always say, like the the charm of and we can transition this into show news. But like what makes this podcast so great is that we're friends and what made it so great early on is that we were like clearly becoming friends and thought each other were really funny and we're realizing that like we kind of had the same sense of humor in certain areas and obviously now we just know each other too right and now and now like we're we're, it was like the early stages of dating no no absolutely (laughs) i've told you this it i don't want someone to steal this but like it gave me the idea to do like a podcast dating show where you take Two people and just be like, hey, you guys are going to like date and podcast for six months, a year or whatever, and see how their bond goes up and maybe at some point goes down or whatever. But I think the thing I've been told that one thing that uh, hurt the podcast and this was something we had to do. And this is absolutely no slight at your ad read skills, which are impeccable. I'd go to war behind your ad reading skills all day uh, that when I stopped doing the ad reads. The show changed, and I was like, "It had to happen, or the show was going to end." <laughs> yeah, because, we, we were, because the show we wasn't going to be make profitable. money. Yeah, yeah. Like the, I mean, I, I, that's not true. Like you, I still do some ads. You d- do some ads, but you have a lot of you have a lot less creative freedom and artistic freedom with your ad reads. Yeah, yeah. I, well, like I know, I think that that's that's bad for the show, but good for business. Had to be like I. Look, if we I lost, wanted it to be the other way, I I'd know. just be fucking doing it and we'd be fighting or something. But I uh, I think that I should not be doing the ad reads for this show. I don't know if, we, if we've if we ever, like, said this on the podcast because I think we were afraid that, like, we'd get in trouble or something. We lost a full a full year of ad reads from a, uh, a corporate sponsor um, after it, – there wasn't – it wasn't a one-strike thing, but, like – we we leaned into it and we lost a full year and I think that that's when I don't even know which one you're talking about. Um, Is it a beverage or a uh, furniture? Um, furniture. I mean, um, everybody knows the Joy Bird thing. Yeah, right. Like, but I don't think people know that we lost a full. They bought a year in advance. Yeah, of, yeah. There was like a it it cost. Not only did it cost us money, it cost and the company that it that cost kind of, the person who was selling ads. For us money like, and like impacted it was their a relationship. Big, it was them. a big sell for them and they work with them yeah. often. And so 
we we felt pretty bad after that. So we like, as, yeah, as much okay. fun as we had with the Joybird thing, we were like, we don't want to fuck with people's livelihoods. Exactly. So that's kind of when we decided to to rein it in. That's how if you've seen if you've seen Saw Ten. Like, you're not going to get to me by taking something away from me. You're going to get to me by being like, this bad thing is going to happen to somebody else because of you. Yeah, right. Uh, so, and then there was another. Uh, there were th- there have been, obviously, over the years. the drink one? I'll tell you off no, the just... air. What, what did we do? Oh, and I was oh. using it as a transition back to <laughs> the thing. And, like... That you, was not even our fault. Yeah, and like, like you weren't the, mad about it. Like your your antenna wasn't even up for it. And like we'd known by then, like, okay, we were Because because of, we treated the ad read like like we were respectful towards the ad read. Yeah. And then once it was done. Yeah. Yeah. We okay, were a little yeah, too loosey goosey. Yeah, I gotcha, I gotcha, gotcha. Um But uh anyway, let's see. What time is it? I, I think that like as long as we bleep out what we're talking about, yeah. It's we can leave most of that in. Okay. Um Anyway, but um, yeah, like the, the bread and butter of this podcast is uh, us doing stuff together, whether it's like building something, building our relationship. Uh, and it, we've now, we now can do like movie shit together and all this like kind of compartmentalized stuff. And I think that some people, love us for that but i think that some people love us for i want to hear these guys dick around about lefou's sex life <laughs> and uh obviously as we've gotten older we've been like oh i want to do a thing about this movie versus like i want to do a thing about how come when people run red lights blah, 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 blah. but i think that we have it all covered it's just in the early days of the podcast it was a lot more like jerry well, seinfeld stand-up yeah well and i also think that like in the early days of the podcast we were like both figuring it out like what we wanted to do personally professionally yeah and at that point and it kind of changed uh for both of us at various points throughout this run because we've been doing this for fucking ever but like when we started it, the podcast was the most important thing to both of us. Like, we were fucking... It was, like, our ways out of certain other things. <laughs> right. It was, it was like... An, it was escapes. It was an escape, yeah. It was an escape from, like, sports for me for forever, where I could just talk about, like, pop culture and stuff that I n- wouldn't be really discussed other- otherwise. Um, you, it was, like, you know, at certain points, like, not crazy about what you were doing professionally and kind of wanted to branch out and and similar similar vibes and we've traded off but like at some at at, pretty much at any point during this run brunch has been like the most important thing to at least one of us yeah and i think over the like the past year year and a half maybe two years it hasn't been and like that's not to say that like we don't care about brunch because we definitely do if we didn't care about it we would just stop doing it and when i think about it it's like i've i could never imagine not wanting to do it because the stuff that we talk about here is stuff that we're going to talk about regardless Mm -hmm. and i don't give a fuck if nobody listens to the show would still sit down and like have this conversation once a week because like you're my best bud. Yeah. This is shit that we're going to talk about regardless. We may as well put it out there because like we have strong takes about pop culture stuff, whether it's me with movies, you with movies, you with music, you with like current events, like it's stuff that we're going to want to put out there in one form or another may as well do the fucking podcast. Right. Right. And uh, so basically I agree with everything that you said there where like there's been stretches where it was like, uh, our thing and it was stretches of like all right well now one of us is really excited about whatever job they have so maybe they're leaning more into that and the other one is like god i hope the podcast can get bigger and we've kind of taken turns being in different spaces towards it but i agree like we've always wanted to do it and 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 this has been the thing that we've done with the exception of sunday skate the thing that we've done together where we've been able to like sit down and work together and recently Grinding. recently uh the opportunity well i guess not super recently um we've been working on something to do together for like essentially our full-time jobs like the 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 
the goal has always been for us to like have brunch become our full time jobs. <laughs> like that was always the dream, and it, it still like kind of is. But we ha we've got an opportunity to like work together every single day, basically, and do something that we're extremely excited about. And because of that the way that we do brunch is going to change. Yeah, episodes as you currently know them, us getting together at Pete's, banging out 45 minutes to an hour and a half, aren't going to happen. But episodes are still going to happen, and they're going to be more topic-specific. And that's not just, okay, that doesn't mean we're just going to be like, okay, five minutes on this movie see you later it's still going to be brunch and it's, it's still going to be through yeah. washed it's still like the brunch brand completely i think is going to be the same yeah the brunch show is going to be instead of uh, the omad diet you know the omad diet no one meal a day okay instead of us giving you like one, one meal big meal we're going to break you off some snacks. Yeah, right. And yeah, I mean, that's a good way to put it. And also, like, it's not going to be fucking NPR. Like, you, if you eat, there's an episode that comes out and it's like, Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift are dating or whatever. And that's the episode title. Mm -hmm. You're not going to click and be like, so here's what's happening this week. Taylor Swift and Travis. Like, we're going to just fucking have these conversations the same way that we would have them on a regular brunch episode. And... It's just going to be packaged in, you know, bite-sized snacks. And I am, like, very hesitant to say that we're going to scale back on brunch, even though... The, I like, think it's the wrong way of putting it. It's yeah. definitely the wrong way of putting it because there is a chance that we end up, like, doing more shit than we are right now for brunch in this fashion yeah depending honestly like i think a big part of that might come down to money and if we can have a producer churn stuff out for us because a good thing about this is like as taylor swift and travis kelsey go right off in a convertible or whatever we won't necessarily be like okay well we'll do that for wednesday's episode mm -hmm. if we have time we'll just do it then and have it on the podcast feed, which is where it'll still exist, on YouTube, which is where it'll still exist. Get it on socials. Yeah, and none of that shit is changing. It's like if you're subscribed to Brunch, you're going to get everything. And a part of that conversation that uh, Pete brought up is we're going to be around each other all the time. Like this, uh, ultimately, like the it's not called the Brunch Partnership, but ultimately the DJ and Pete Partnership has for sure... Big time strengthened. We've uh, made a company that we'll be able to uh, tell you about hopefully very soon. And it will make all of this make a million times yeah, more I'm sense. Yeah, I'm sure this is very fucking confusing right now. Um, but you're going to be seeing, like, uh, you're going to be seeing so much more of us that I've, like, really been considering. I'm, uh, this isn't going to happen, but I'm like, I might just stop posting. <laughs> No, you'll never stop. I might, you'll like, never quit posting. But yeah, this is going to make a lot more sense, hopefully in like a week or two, um, when we can announce uh, the details of the, the thing that we're working on. But yeah, we, we've started a company and we are going to be, uh, we're going to be together a lot more. We're going to yeah. be doing a lot more stuff. Um, and it's scratch, oh, when, when you see how many itches <laughs> this thing scratches for us, like when I said like I've been uh, cooking, like, I've been cooking the way I want to cook and, like, the way you would want me to cook. And the things that we've worked on so far, we've been like, yes. We're both very excited. This is, is good. the way to put it. We're both very excited. Uh, I'm very excited about the company, very excited about uh, what we're going to be doing. But I'm also very excited about brunch because I think that, like, the way that we've the way that we're going to structure it, it, it allows us to do stuff whenever we're excited about it. We don't have to wait till a certain day to put an episode out. We're going to hit stuff right when it's like hot and at the front of our minds. Um, we're still going to be doing movie stuff uh, pretty frequently. We're still going to be doing our Oscar stuff every single year. Um, we're going to be tackling the same stuff. It's just going to be like you get to, for you, like the listener, you get to pick and choose the stuff that you want to listen to. Like, you don't have to listen to a full episode of brunch and be like, okay, I don't really care about this. Like you don't care about a, like a movie or a certain topic. You can skip that episode and you can 
go listen to the next one. Like it's, I think it's going to work out for everybody. A thing that I would hope th- can come of this too is, uh, I don't want to commit to the what, when, where, or why, but like I would love if we're doing this kind of a la carte stuff. So if they're if Oppenheimer and Barbie, like think like the Barbie and Oppenheimer episode, something like that, like we'll still do that. You know, yeah, and like, like we'll yeah. have that out early the way that we had it. If we're really right excited away. about something, there might be an hour hour episode. Right. Like it's it's up to us. But I we do want I do want to be able to plan like, all right, on November whatever, let's do a fucking live episode. Mm-hmm. Like because I, I, it still would be cool to do like very occasionally these like a normal brunch episode. And once we haven't done like an hour and a half episode in a while, I bet we will have the itch to on special occasions do a thing, hopefully with people around. And like I said, I'm going to stop posting. I'm not going to stop posting. We're still going to be where we are online. What's that? said, bet some people wish you would. Yeah. Well, I was going to say you can unfollow, but you can't because the for you thing. It's true. Do you think that I'm put in front of anybody on for you? Uh, Do people get pissed? Well, I guess people who follow you probably get pissed in your mentions too. Yeah. How many how of. many how many like mentions do you get that like you click on their profile and they say d- not they don't follow you? I get a lot of those now so yeah, I think that I'm I get some of those. Yeah. Um I've been noticing though I do get I'll get like a f- like a 5 and 5 which I'd never gotten before. What does that mean? Like five retweets, five yeah. likes. That's right. so like that's so weird. It's very square. If it's five retweets, it should be like 40 likes. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh weird. Uh but yeah, that's the update with the show. Uh, did uh, if you have any more? If you have any questions, like if we weren't very, if we didn't do a good job, if you have any questions that aren't like, what's the company? Just send, oh, yeah. send them our way. We'll do our best to to help kind of flesh out what it's going to look like. But it's it's really not going to be the biggest change in the world. The thing that I started to hit on but forgot was uh, to hit what will probably be a big uh, frequently asked question. If you are one of the people who doesn't really need us talking, uh, you who doesn't tune in because you want to hear our takes on a movie or whatever, and you just think that you like hearing us talk to each other uh, or dicking around, that's going to exist. The, the the screwing around is for sure and the you're gonna have as much of that as there. your heart could possibly handle right like they it, it's we've alluded to it but like if you if you're just in the pete and deej content game yeah you're, you're this is the, the best news of your life it feels like uh it's like a a, a graduation and uh like a retirement kind of thing all of, like you know when like a coach like gets kicked upstairs to be a GM or something like that. Mm-hmm. It's like that, but we're also going to be fucking like first line centers, which is scary. Uh, all right. Well, we have to go do uh, man on the street at a boy genius show.